Hello my friends, I haven't posted a rant for a while, so I'm not responding to a video, but rather we'll read this article together and I will give you my thoughts on it. A link to the full article is provided in the description box below. I have made a lot of video responses since I came onto YouTube many years ago, and I've enjoyed making them. Some angered me, some made me feel sad, and some, well, they were just fucking funny. One thing I never wanted to do was to become someone who judged others' beliefs through my own worldview. What I mean by that is I didn't want to become a bigot towards Christians or Christianity. I've always strived to see the individuals instead of a nebulous group. Personally, I believe that stereotyping and placing any group into a box is dehumanizing. I've disagreed with beliefs or practices openly but I've always recognized their right under our Constitution to practice and believe how they wish. Christians have every right to believe and practice their faith. However, they do not have the right to commit acts of violence or intimidation towards anyone, regardless of whether they think that person or group is under some unseen demonic force. That is insanity and must be called out and condemned by everyone. I do not want to direct anger or fear at Christians. I want the individuals who commit these acts to be captured and punished through our legal system. <laughs> so this is an article from Only Sky News. It's called the how dehumanizing language fueled the satanic temple arson attack. And this article is by a gentleman named Joseph Laycock. On June 10th, 2022, an arsonist attempted to burn down the headquarters of the satanic temple in Salem, Massachusetts. 42-year-old Daniel Damien Lucy took a bus from Chelsea, then walked to the building, arriving around 10 p.m. He was recorded on a doorbell camera, pouring lighter fluid on the front porch and igniting it before dropping his backpack into to the fire as kindling and walking away. A property manager and two bed and breakfast guests who were in the building at the same time were unharmed. I'm glad no one was hurt, but what a scary thing to have happened. The loss of feeling safe and fears of being burned alive? Yikes. I would not be able to sleep. That is just really messed up. Some people are really sick. This attack comes only one year after an unknown arsonist burned down a historic home in Pow... Pow... Keep... Pow... Keep... Pow... <laughs> Kipsky, New York, frequented by the Church of Satan, a group founded in 1966 with no relation to DST. In the video, Lucy can be seen wearing a t-shirt that says, God, which made it easy for police to identify him. You see the man walking off Bridge Street and straight to the porch, wearing a t-shirt reading God on the front. He drops his bag, pours flammable liquid, and lights it on fire before walking away. We've had some people stop by, we've gotten a lot of threats, but we've never had somebody do something as uh, blatant as throw uh, an accelerant on our on our building and light it on fire. Lucian Greaves is the co-founder of the Satanic Temple. They've been here for about seven years. Greaves says the suspect left, but not for long. Came back up the street uh, from the other direction and then was hoping to observe the fire, at which point we had already given law enforcement images of the man from the security footage. He came back to watch it burn. When he returned to the scene to watch his handiwork, something arsonists often do. Lucy attempted to evade the police, but later claimed he had returned to turn himself in. He was charged with arson of a dwelling, a civil rights violation, and destruction of a place of worship. He initially requested to represent himself, but the judge persuaded him to use a public defender. So this isn't the first attack against Satanists? He wasn't going to turn himself in. <laughs> Not only did he attempt to murder people, but he is a lousy liar too. Personally, I would have loved to see him defend himself. Y'all, Honor, God told me to do this, and in my Bible it reads, Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. And if I am found guilty, then the devil made me do it. I rest my case. This was not Lucy's first arson that Salem News reported. He has multiple prior property destruction and burning cases in Boston Municipal Court, some of which he was on probation for. So the question is not why a firebug like Lucy tried to set a building on fire, but why he tried to set this particular building on fire. Christians sure like to burn stuff. Books, idols, people. See witchcraft. Somebody sent us to the mail. 
and we're going to go through a list of things that you should either burn or just throw in the garbage. That is magic, occult wizardry. So if you have the ability, I recommend burning them. A church has a religious right to burn occultic materials. Burn the witch! Burn the witch! Do you smoke? Burn the witch! Yes, we'll find out soon enough. While it is tempting to frame this as the act of a lone nut, there is a larger context to this crime. Destructive rhetoric about a minority of religion steered Lucy toward his target, and more importantly made him feel he had moral license to use violence. When I interviewed members of TST for my book, Speak of the Devil, nearly everyone in a leadership position described receiving death threats. Like most situations in which a religious minority is the target of focused hate, perceptions of the satanic temple are widely divorced from reality. TST does not believe in a literal Satan, but it admires the literary figure of Satan as a mythological embodiment of the values of self-determination and resistance to arbitrary authority. Their core beliefs are articulated in the Seven Tenets, a group of moral precepts that most people would recognize as thoughtful and positive. But reality has never been an impediment to hateful stereotypes, and threats and violence are not unusual when minority religions demand equal rights in communities that have historically privileged Christianity. However, TST these political actions have elicited especially vitriolic responses. I probably have a larger following than the entire satanic temple, to be realistic, right? I mean, I don't have, you know, people who follow my channel. I'm talking about views per day and subscribers, probably bigger than the satanic temple. So I know I can easily say, hey, everybody, there's the, the, uh, the statue in Arkansas, but I would never incite violence upon people or the destruction of the monument because, you know, I'm not that kind of a guy, am I? No, of course not. Your covert language is not lost on me. I know you are indirectly trying to incite violence with this language, while also having plausible deniability, and I hope everyone watching this video knows this, and if violence does happen, that this is entered as possible cause. This is not the first time you have done this. Some of my nearest and dearest friends are going to be holding a black mass in Salem, Massachusetts. <laughs> <sighs> and they're selling tickets, which means it's open to the public. Guess I gotta get my black bathrobe and maybe a mask? Buy my ticket? Maybe even get a fake ID? <laughs> or is that even necessary? Because remember, you don't know what I look like. I could be anyone, anywhere on that day. And you'll all be looking, right? all hoping to meet me because it sounds to me like you guys are really big fans of the channel really big fans but don't get goosebumps don't get too excited because i'm really not there to make friends i'm there to see what it's all about i'm there to see and show you that we can all just get along can't we? <laughs> In 2014, after TST announced their plan to build a satanic statue to complement a Ten Commandments monument installed at the Oklahoma Capitol, a commenter on Fox News, Don Limus, in the morning opined, they should be able to put the statue up and then they should be shot right next to it. Well, you're making a moral equivalence between, uh, say, Christianity, which promotes things good for the most part, and, and all other religions, and Satanism, which, which is, is promotes evil. Not, not a doing. good role model. So they, yeah. should they, be, they should be able to put the statue up, and then they should be shot right next to it, and then we take it down. Yeah. I hope Don Imus is fired from Fox. Nobody should make a public statement like that and be on the news. That is a really disgusting thing to say. I actually did a video on the uh, Baphomet statue. I'll put a card up here. Also, I'm not going to read the tweet. There is a link to the article below, and I'm going to be skipping some of the text. I encourage you to read the whole article. It's well written. On January 10th, 2018, actor Corey Feldman retweeted a woman who posted an image of TST's headquarters with the message since deleted. On January 13th, a man attempted to break into the headquarters armed with a sharpened screwdriver. I've actually been been stabbed with a screwdriver, it, it was painful. There is a direct relationship between reckless discourse and the actions of disturbed individuals. In fact, Lucy seems to feel that this act of arson was the moral thing to do. When Salem Police Detective Wesley Reagan interrogated him, Lucy explained that they're devil worshippers. Reagan asked him what that meant to him. 
And he answered, it means they need to be wiped out, adding it's a hate crime. Some have interpreted the statement as Lucy confessing to a hate crime, but Lucy pled not guilty to all charges. More likely, he meant that TST's existence is itself a hate crime, and that he was therefore justified in using violence against the religion. That is disturbing. The fact that some religious extremists believe it is justified in using violence against others based solely upon their religion Thanks, King James. These kinds of pseudo-legal arguments are common among TST's conservative Christian opponents. The American Society for the Defense of Tradition, Family, and Property is a far-right Catholic group that often protests TST, frequently bears signs stating Satan has no rights. Another significant feature of Lucy's crime was the contents of the backpack he used as kindling. In addition to some sticks and two quarts of lighter fluid, it also contained a Bible and a copy of the Constitution. Singed Bible pages were found near the crime scene, juxtaposed of these two books likely symbolize an ideology of Christian nationalism for Lucy. So there is a ritualistic dimension to this crime in which Lucy sought to incorporate symbols of his ideology into his act of violence. I agree with the author here too. I've seen the rise in rhetoric online and how it spreads. I am all for freedom of speech and I am against censorship, but the rise in religious bigotry towards other religions is disturbing, and much of it stems from Christian extremists. The most chilling detail of Lucy's crime was his response when asked if he knew people were inside the building he attempted to burn down. Lucy answered he was not aware of the occupants, but if there were devil worshippers, he would not lose sleep over it. Lucy's moral viewpoint divides humanity into two categories, killing people like like him is murder while killing devil worshippers is a moral action, even if it is technically illegal. This sort of mentality does not form overnight, but metastasizes as a result of dehumanizing discourse about religious minorities. Lucy may have acted alone, but he does not bear sole responsibility for the arson. Nearly a decade of hysterical rhetoric claim that TST are a threat to America, undeserving of constitutional rights, and that they should be lined up and shot. Directly contributed to this crime, so too has the larger context of a satanic panic in America, which has extended continuously from the 1980s into QAnon conspiracy theories about the Illuminati torturing children. Emerging religions like TST are often controversial, and it is hardly surprising that some people are upset about TST attempts to bring Satanism into the public square or files lawsuits arguing their religious freedom should entitle them to abortion on demand. But whether we like them or not, TST remain law-abiding citizens in a religiously plural society as well as fellow human beings worthy of life liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. There is a great danger of forgetting this in an environment defined by social media bubbles and overheated rhetoric. I also agree with the author on this point. I have seen the rise in dehumanizing rhetoric. There is no person, no group, no religion, or ethnicity that could not one day find itself on the receiving end of dehumanizing rhetoric from a powerful majority. We all have every incentive to oppose such rhetoric long before it is aimed at us. The rise in ignorance is scary. The number of people who buy into and believe all these unproven conspiracies is alarming. So many intelligent people believe pure nonsense. Lizard people, the Illuminati, Flat Earth, Simulation Theory, that Satanists sacrifice babies. I've seen people twist things to make them associated with Satanism and then condemn that person through shoddy evidence. Oh, and by the way... Epstein killed himself. There is no proof otherwise, and jailers, guards, video technicians, doctors, medical staff, and investigators all would have to be in on it and purposely covering it up. Nobody sneaks into a high-security prison, murders someone, and then walks out unseen. That is impossible. Anyways, stay safe, be careful, and be aware, but be proud. Be proud of who you are. Until next time, I will see you in hell, you heathens. But don't get goosebumps, don't get too excited, because I'm really not there to make friends. I'm there to see what it's all about. I'm there to see and show you that we can all just get along, can't we? <laughs>